everyone, this video is about Hewlett Packard's 10B2 Plus financial calculator. The B2 Plus is the latest evolution of a series of business calculators that started in 1987 with the 10B basic business calculator from HP's Pioneer series. And the 10B successor, the 10B2, was released in 2001 and had similar functionality uh, but in a more rounded body and a slightly different keyboard configuration. Uh, the 10B2's production was outsourced to third parties who had to reverse engineer the functionality from the 10B and the quality of some of the financial algorithms suffered as a result. And the keyboard click on the 10B uh, was softer uh, and it, that alienated many users. Uh, but with the new calculator team at HP, a decision was made to produce uh, the 10B2 Plus in-house. And the B2 Plus was introduced in 2011 with new firmware and an expanded set of functionality from its predecessors. So there was new bonds and depreciation functions, and it also included uh, some scientific functions and expanded statistical capabilities, which took the calculator way beyond what you'd expect from an entry-level model. Physically, the B2 Plus is very light at only 226 grams, and for its price point, is really well engineered. Uh, it's got a plastic body and brushed aluminum screen plate, and it has a simple 7-segment 12-digit uh, LCD display, but the digits are large, uh, crisp, and high con contrast. And the keyboard feels uh, slightly plasticky, but the keys uh, have a firm action and a really satisfying uh, click to them uh, that gives you a lot of confidence that you're entering numbers correctly. And the labels on the keys appear to be printed on. Uh, they're not injection molded like on the Pioneer series. Uh, on the back of the calculator uh, has four feet uh, to, stop, to stop it slipping on a desk. Uh, and the two coin cell batteries are easily accessible. And interesting, like the uh, 20B and the 30B, uh, there's actually a six pin adapter uh, for flashing the firmware. Um, but I'm not aware of any alternative firmware you can actually load on this calculator. Unlike, say, the WP34S firmware that was developed by the enthusiast community for the 20B and 30B. B2 Plus is an algebraic mode calculator and it doesn't support RPN. So by default, if I type in 2 plus 3 times 4 and then equals, I get 14 because the multiply operation has higher precedence than addition. But the B2 Plus also has a chain mode where equations are evaluated in the order that you type them in. So I can switch to chain mode via blue shift and the on key. And now if I type in 2 plus 3 times 4 and equals, I get 20. So chain mode effectively adds and equals after every term of your equation. And if you watch my video on the Casio FX39, you'll know that before 1978, all algebraic mode calculators actually worked in chain mode. And it's an interesting option. It's a little bit like RPN in that if you switch around the terms of equations, it can allow you to enter equations without parentheses. But it's clearly really important to understand which of these two modes you're working in. And I'll switch back to algebraic mode now. And the B2 Plus allows you to adjust the number of decimal places displayed. So usually if you're doing financial calculations, you pick four or two decimal places. So I can switch to four now uh, with redshift and display four. Uh, and the calculator also supports scientific notation. So the GDP of the US is currently around $20.5 trillion. Uh, so I can enter that by typing 20.5 and then redshift E and then 12. And the calculator has a single core memory re register that you can access with the arrow M and RM keys. So to store that GDP in that register, I can just hit arrow M. Uh, and I can recall it with RM. And there's also uh, the M plus key for adding values to that memory register. Uh, there's also store and recall keys to access 20 other numbered registers. So say to store uh, the number 50 into say register 2, I can hit redshift store and then 2. Uh, and then to recall that, I would go recall 2. 
Uh, and you can also use uh, recall and equals uh, to recall the last calculated result, uh, which is quite useful. And there's also a special K memory register that can store a constant operation. Uh, so say I wanted to multiply a bunch of numbers by 6.5. Uh, I could type in, say, 2 times 6.5, and then k, and then equals. And now if I type in other numbers and equals, that operation gets applied to them. So say 5 and equals, uh, or 10 and equals. And while the b2 plus is not programmable, uh, this is a simple way you can save some time uh, keying in repetitive operations. And there's also an input key on the B2+. Uh, so this is used to separate two numbers uh, when using two numbered functions or two uh, variable statistics. So say if I wanted to find the number of combinations of three picks uh, out of five, I could enter five, input three, uh, and then the blue shift and the combination key. And there's also a swap key that switch, uh, switches these two numbers around. And it can also switch the last two numbers you've entered. So say if I type uh, 7 divided by 3, uh, but I actually wanted 3 divided by 7, uh, I can hit redshift swap uh, and then hit equals. B2 plus includes the usual financial operations you'd expect, uh, plus more. And I'll do a quick run through the main ones. So the top row of the keyboard is dedicated to time value of money calculations. And before using these functions, it's really important to have the right settings entered. So the first important setting is periods per year. And a lot of the time you would have this set to one. Uh, but if you're dealing with, say, monthly mortgage payments, uh, you would set this to 12. And the second important setting is uh, begin and end mode. So this identifies whether the first payment occurs at the beginning or end of the first period. This defaults to the end of the period, uh, but you can toggle the setting uh, with redshift and uh, begin end. So with all our settings correct, uh, we can now uh, enter our problem value. So say we have a $500,000 mortgage with a yearly interest rate of 2.5% that we're paying back over 30 years. Uh, so we'd enter in uh, 30 times 12 months in N as our number of periods. Uh, we'd set 2.5 as our interest rate. Uh, we'd enter 500k as our present value. Uh, and obviously we'd want our future value to be zero. And uh, now we can solve for our periodic payments by hitting uh, PMT. Uh, so that's $19.75 per month. And with the time value of money function, you can enter any of the four or um, of the five values and solve for the fifth. So say we only wanted to pay $1,900 uh, per month. Uh, we can enter that in as our periodic payment uh, and hit present value to find out how much we could borrow. And we can find uh, the amortization schedule of the loan uh, that divides our payments into amounts that apply to interest and principal. Uh, so to do this, we can hit uh, redshift amortization. Uh, and in the first year, uh, we'd be paying off uh, almost $11,000 uh, in principal uh, and almost $12,000 in interest. And at the end of the uh, period, uh, the value of our loan would be uh, $469,000. And you can also use the time value money uh, functions to calculate depreciation. So say we bought a vehicle for $20,000 and wanted to depreciate it over five years, and we intend to salvage $6,000 at the end of the period. Uh, so we'd set the uh, periods per year uh, to be one. Uh, and we'd set our number of periods as 5 uh, and 20,000 as our present value uh, 6,000 as our future value. Uh, and then we'd need to decide how we want to depreciate the asset. So for a vehicle we might want to use um, some of years depreciation where the asset loses most of its value early on in its life. 
Uh, so now we can type in 1 as the number of the period we're interested in, and then blue shift and sum of uh, year's depreciation. So in the first year, uh, the vehicle would depreciate by uh, $4,666. And the calculator also supports straight line depreciation and uh, declining balance depreciation uh, that can be quite useful for technology items like laptops. You can also convert between nominal and effective interest rates, so say 10% um, as a nominal rate uh, and 12 payments per year that are compounding. Uh, that equates to an annual effective rate of 10.47%. Uh, the B2 Plus also can solve problems involving cash flows, so the calculator can take a series of up to 45 cash flows and calculate the internal rate of return a net present value or net future value. So to get started with cash flow calculations, it's important to clear the cash flow memory uh, with blue shift uh, C0. Uh, and we also want to make sure the number of periods per year is set correctly. So again, for annual cash flows, uh, you would set this to 1. And for monthly cash, cash flows, you would set this to 12. So say we have initial uh, cash outflow of $40,000 and then say two monthly cash flows of 11000 and then two of $12,000. Uh, we'd start by clearing our cash flow memory and then setting our periods per year to 12. So red shift periods per year. Uh, and then enter our initial cash outflow. So that's negative $40,000. Uh, and then we hit the cash flow button. Uh, and then we'd enter our incoming flows. So uh, the first one was uh, two payments of 11,000. So hit 11,000, input two, and then cash flow. Uh, and then uh, two payments of 12,000. Now if we wanted uh, to check we've entered our values correctly, we can use the cash flow editor uh, by hitting uh, recall and then the cash flow button uh, and we can use the plus and minus keys to scroll through uh, the entries and now uh, we've entered our figures correctly so to find out our internal rate of return uh, we can hit a red shift in IIR per year and to calculate our net present value uh, we'd need an interest rate so let's say uh, 10% uh, interest per year uh, and now we can hit a uh, red shift and net present value uh, and if we hit uh, red shift and swap now uh, we can also see our net future value. And the calculator supports date entry and arithmetic and again here there are two key settings uh, you can switch between days months year format or months days year format you can switch between 360 day years or actual 365 day years and uh, you enter dates using a decimal point uh, so the current date is uh, the 16th of November 2020 uh, so to key in that in uh, your day month year format I would go 16 dot 11 2020 uh, and then I can hit the red shift and the date key and say if I wanted to know what uh, the date 90 days from now is I can just type 90 and equals uh, and I get the 14th of February uh, 2021 and the calculator also has uh, bond uh, calculations primarily for calculating bond prices and yields and the bond functionality uses all the uh, 10 blue shift keys on the top two rows of the keyboard. And I won't do a uh, bond calculation, uh, but generally uh, you would set uh, your bond maturity date, uh, your settlement date, uh, your coupon rate and your call price, which is often $100. Uh, and then you can either enter your settlement price and hit uh, YTM, to solve for the yield to maturity or you can enter um, a desired yield uh, and then uh, hit the price key to show the price you should pay for that bond. And the calculator also supports break even functionality which uses the blue shifted versions of the third row of keys. Uh, so again you can enter any four values and solve for a fifth. 
So say if we were buying and selling uh, 8,000 product units at $95, uh, we can enter 8,000 uh, in a units uh, value, uh, and then 95 as our sale price, and say each product costs us $75, uh, we can enter that as our variable cost, and say there's a one-off setup cost of uh, $100,000, uh, we can enter that as a fixed cost. Uh, and now we can solve for uh, profit. Uh, but say if we wanted to make $80,000 profit, uh, we can enter that into our profit uh, value and say solve for our sale price. Uh, or say if we went back to our original sales price, uh, we could solve for uh, units. Uh, so we'd need to sell 9,000 units. And the calculator also supports a surprising number of statistical features and you can enter a series of one or two variable data using the epsilon plus key uh, and then you can calculate mean standard deviation, weighted mean and so on. You can also calculate uh, Z and students T probability distribution values and the calculator can do six different types of regression models in order to predict new values so there's linear, logarithmic, uh, exponential power exponent and inverse regression modes and that's not all like the b2 plus could also calculate uh, permutations and combinations uh, it's got factorial and it's got uh, trigonometric functions inverse trig and hyperbolic trig functions with angles and degrees or radians uh, and there's even a pi key uh, so i'm not sure how many people who buy this financial calculator would use these scientific features uh, but I guess it's nice to know that they are there. So as, in summary, as you can see, the 10B2 Plus is a surprisingly fully featured calculator. Uh, currently it's only 25 US dollars on Amazon, and that's amazing value. For that you're getting uh, HP build quality, very capable calculator that performs all the common financial operations, and also has advanced statistical features and even some scientific features thrown in for good measure. And it's interesting to compare it to HP's other financial calculators, uh, the 12C and the 17B2+. Plus. Uh, the 10B2+, Plus has actually many more functions than the 12C, uh, but the 12C supports keystroke programming, RPN, and has a better build quality. Uh, the 12C also is one of the only two calculators currently improved uh, for the CFA exam. Uh, the other being Texas Instruments uh, BA2+. Plus. And the 17 uh, B2+, plus actually has a similar set of functionality, uh, but it also includes the HP Solver, which I find really useful for being able to plug in my own equations and being able to solve for uh, unknowns. But these high-end calculators are three or four times the price of the 10 B2+. Plus. So all in all, uh, the B2 Plus is an excellent option for a student or professional in the financial sphere as long as you don't need RPN uh, programmability and you don't intend to use the calculator in the CFA exam. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful.